Okay, so this is just a quick introduction to the audience studio. Um, if you've got a, a microphone connected uh, in there to the wall box, so if we look through to 203, we can see the wall box there. Here in 201, this room here, in 202, which is the studio, the wall box is behind the uh, wall there. So let's say you've got a microphone connected to channel one and a sound source playing. Well, if you turn up the input gain here, you should see uh, a signal metering if it's a dynamic microphone. If it's a condenser microphone, you'll need to turn on the phantom power, which is this red button here. But before you do that, go down to the channel and just cut the channel so we don't damage the speakers. And then you can turn on the phantom power. So with that turned on, with the gain turned up, you should see a, a meter uh, signal metering either here or here. Uh, this is just the three segment meter. Uh, it's um, sort of a very basic meter. It doesn't really um, give us any indication as to the amount of level. It just tells us that there's a signal coming into the console. But if we press this meter flip button here, <clears throat> we'll see that signal then meter onto this uh, meter here. So any signal coming from the live room will be a mic signal. So um, that button there where it says line should be out. If it's, if it's pressed in, it's a line input. And, um, and we only receive mic inputs from the live room. So that should always be out. And then adjust your gain so you get a, a, a meter level sort of in line with zero VU. So the peak level should be just about there. Uh, then what you do is you come down to the routing section and because we're on channel one, we press the uh, button channel one on the routing matrix and that then will send the signal off to channel one. We generally, my best advice would be to work in line. So if you've got a microphone plugged into channel one, route to channel one. And then we come down here to the short fader and we turn that up to zero VU, like so. Once we've done that, we can ignore all these other functions for the time being. Once we've done that, we go over to the software, create a session. And in our session, when it loads, it's loaded. Let me just create a new session. And there's our new session. First thing we need to do is go to save as and save under student work storage. Give it a name and save it. Uh, make sure your audio file box is checked so that the audio goes into the project. And save. And then on the channel strip, check the input is corresponding with the channel. So input one and output one. Put it into record and I for input monitor. And with the short fader up, you'll see a signal then meter on here. Name the channel strip. And then the sound goes into the audio interface and then it comes back in through to the long fader, which is this one here. So what we would need to do to hear the sound in the studio is to turn up the uh, long fader, make sure that it's in the mix, which is that button there. Go over to the master section here, bring the fader up to zero, and then turn our master volume up and we should see a signal metering on there. So that's my quick setup. So first of all, connect the microphone, make sure there's a sound source, sort out the input section, route the signal, bring the signal path or the short fader or channel fader, whichever you prefer, up to zero. Set up your software, create a track, make sure that the input and output corresponds, name the track, put it into record, input monitor, then on the long fader path, bring up the long fader, put it in the mix, and over then here on the master section, bring up the master fader, make sure it's set to main monitors and turn the monitors up. Another thing that you can catch you out is they could be cut, but you'll see that light light up.